Hello everybody, and welcome to the next episode of my tutorial series for Against the Storm. In this one, we're going to tackle our first match in Prestige 1 difficulty. I want to start on out with spending my rewards from the last run first though, because I think right now this is something we really should talk about. We got a lot of stockpiles, I got some machinery and artifacts because I had a lucky start there, and we are allowed to unlock stuff all the way up to this. Uh, here we need a higher level for that. So at the end of the last episode I have already unlocked the trade route feature which we're going to play with. And uh, I, I strongly recommend you to have at least that to, before you set any foot into prestige. Because it really helps a ton. I'll show you why. So what's also pretty tasty is to have this upgrade, the ability to upgrade your hub into a neighborhood is really powerful in many regards we're going to pick that up too also keep um keep an eye out that on the fact that you get some fundamental basic power-ups here as well so this one here less queens and patience and more citadel resources well spend more resource spend resources to gain more resources it's pretty much a no-brainer here we get some new embarkation bonuses not nearly as interesting as increasing our embarkation points, you know, it's way more interesting to have more embarkation points. And uh, the other thing that I want to unlock here is the consumption control, because that's a very, very handy tool to have as well. The other things here, well, I would have loved to have unlocked additional blueprint choices. This would have been a good choice instead of the neighborhoods as well. but. One thing at a time. You will most likely unlock these bit by bit, but uh, really, really powerful, note uh, noteworthy things are these here. An extra choice of blueprint is massive. It makes your game so much easier. I personally consider that right now as a blunder. This upgrade is not as powerful as that one, so just so you know. And uh, well, yeah, trade routes. Trade routes are super powerful. Really, really. And embarkation points are as well. Here, the additional cornerstone choice is nearly as cool as this one, but you have to take the pretty boring upgrade first. And uh, here, well, it's just not that interesting. The plus one bonus chance to obtain production bonus yields is pretty cool, but oh uh, well. Oh well, that ain't that interesting. Okay, enough about that. Let's get into the actual settlement. So Prestige is going to be a tad bit harder, therefore we're not going to go into any challenge sites here, but uh, we're going to go on into this direction here, and this is going to be our last session in this series on the Royal Woodlands. I'm going to go here because I want to uncover the question mark. The Royal Woodlands are, in my opinion, the easiest biome to play in, that's why I was featuring them quite a lot in the series right now. We're going to explore the other biomes in the course of this. So Prestige 1, the only real difference between this and the former difficulty is that we need now four more points to win the game. That's that. It's, except for this change, it's the same as Viceroy. So if you manage to deal well with Viceroy, you're most likely going to deal well with prestige as well. Although there's one thing that I forgot about to say. Um, the amount of resources needed for Glade events increases when you enter the prestige realm as well. That's pretty important to note. So, our starting colony. Well, this dude here comes with tools, and whenever somebody comes with tools, I'm sold. This is one of the most powerful early game upgrades to have in my humble opinion because this means we have a basically a free, free success on our first event we are also starting out with beavers that ain't bad either so wood production will be a breeze so embarkation bonus we're going to pick on up the food and uh let's go so we're going to continue with our standard procedure as usual but first let's check out the forest mysteries so we gain reputation points for every dangerous or forbidden glade event completed during drizzle season that's a really tough one because you technically have to start during storm to get the bonus of that but the reward is massive half a reputation point is half a victory point so i don't like it too much because i find it very hard to utilize we're most likely not going to utilize it during this matchup. So, 
people off-road are slower during storm, stuff we sacrifice in the hearth is burning faster, and uh, people without complex food and without housing will have a penalty to their resolve stacking up. That's a really nasty debuff, because that means the longer they remain under this uh, status, the more pissed they grow, and last but not least, spreading contamination, well, we have a higher impatience grow for every blight rot cyst. All right, that ain't too problematic. This one is a real culprit. That means we'll have to focus on complex food in this, pa uh, in this match way harder than usual. There's always something about the game uh, that you're playing there, and therefore we it's really, really, really important to check that out. So while I'm slapping down my standard procedure, a quick pointer on the info box down there you have a playlist link so if you want to check on out the other difficulties there be my guest and there's also support links down there featuring paypal patreon and buy me a coffee as ways and means to support this little channel here and i'd be really delighted if you did so this channel is all free content will stay free content and therefore i can use all the help that i can get so thanks for listening and let's game on. So the first thing that I'm doing here is I'm going to forbid the coal as a fuel because I want to keep those 20 units of coal. This is a ways and means to finish off events. That's massive. So picking up some dudes and slapping them into the woodcutters camps because it's really important now that we don't even have any uh, extra woodcutters. And I learned a new little, little, nifty little trick. When you hold down control, you're uh, not going to brush anything on the on the borders of your of your woodcutters and we ha also have a little bit of a different setting now that came with a new update so we're going to go for either uh, only marked trees because our tree marking marking is now really good no, we're going to go for avoid blades here altogether so new setting and uh now we don't hold uh, left shift anymore we can't just do that by the click of one button I do like those changes, gotta say. So uh, we're uh, speeding up here a bit and waiting for those uh, buildings to be done. As you see there, the wood is already flowing in. We have no problems whatsoever. So our first cornerstone is going to be found. So Lachs in the Wilds, that's a beautiful one. Whenever we open a glade, we get a free villager. I like that one. Firekeeper's Armor is something for way higher difficulty levels and you really won't need it in the very early prestige levels. If you need that, you should really work on your uh, Blight Post construction instead of uh, picking this cornerstone. You're wasting an opportunity, or, uh, opportunity there, at least in my opinion. So, Lost in the Wilds it is, and uh, we're going to take a look into the blueprints, because quite often there is already a, a, a little bit of something that you'd really like to have. For example, I can already say, the simple tools here look really interesting. So does the jerky though. So I'm not really willing to decide at that point because I cannot say, will I have any source of meat? Will I find a source of meat on one of those glades or, or whatnot? It's really not foreseeable right now. So we have our set first set of orders. I personally like to open up like one or two of them before I stall them. So this one is difficult. Oil is really cool because you can solve glade events with that, but uh, I'm personally a big, big fan of the scouts pack uh, thingy because that makes so many things happen easier. And we open only have to open four glades for that. So second one, here we have to deliver one ancient tablet and receive some goodies, or we do sales and worth of 12 amber spend seven amber and gain tools for that i'm sold for the tools i'm personally always picking up the tools because i feel like food is way easier to earn all right so uh we're we're seeing that so this is one scenario where i am going to change my course of action for the first time so usually you see me not opening any small plates or anything this time we're going to go different so uh this guy interesting so this guy w is uh, going to be on default here for the time being and left shift to mark that thing so first off we have to open up four glades in total you're 
we're going to take quite a while if we just want to take it, if we just want to do that via danger glades and orders should be fulfilled asap in my humble uh, opinion and the other thing is we are really low on workers with that start that we chose so opening up a glade here will give us another villager which is outright brilliant right now in the current situation so let's go for that so we're chopping up that glade there we go so we're setting him back to avoid glades again because i don't want any whoopsies and uh what do we have here so uh we got ourselves a small cache filled with some food and some essence i personally like to transform them into reputation and we got ourselves some eggs that's pretty good so also we got ourselves another worker which is the best part about that so we could now open up more glades but i won't because i don't want to increase the hostility too fast so and besides it doesn't new territory is worth nothing without the uh without the manpower to fill it when you start on out with prestige you gain also access to the forsaken altar well we're not going to use this forsaken altar at all right now oh i'm out of building uh, projects let's change that because um this is you can there sacrifice citadel resources that stuff you buy upgrades with and or villagers during the storm to get yourself some kick-ass upgrades so it is entirely not necessary to gimp your run like that on the uh, on the earlier prestige levels but if you ever find yourself struggling the forsaken altar can help you in the storm season so we got ourselves now the harvester's camp i'm not going to put down a person in here because plant fiber is right now not as uh, interesting to me as a root deficit where we're going to get some food from although i lately been told that uh deposit would be a proper pronunciation so i'm sorry if i'm uh, scraping on people's ears with that i'm no native speaker so sometimes pronunciations just go down the way they do with me so there we go I leave one worker open because there's still the decorations that we're going to build to upgrade our hub. So then we have the first upgrade and that's coming with three mood bonuses. So that's our first gear in a nutshell. And if you were watching the rest of the series as well, you might have already noticed that I kind of like uh, roll like this every time. So it's just a it's just a procedure that has grown very uh, effective for me and feel free to share your starting methods that you grew accustomed to, to as well that you find effective and, and why because i'm really curious because i'm certainly sure that this is uh, neither the best nor the only method of doing it that's a wonderful thing about against the storm it really has a lot of different solutions to your problems so in the first year we're i'm personally i personally love to stick to um the uh to a very conservative uh regimen just uh collecting the wood clearing out the areas for the glades that we're going to open in the next year stuff like that we're going to do something nifty though oh yeah i'm down so uh since we have that uh nice aura of peace thingy you know let's try and play around with that so our beavers have a massive amount of resource so that's going to be just fine we're going to open up that uh, danger glade there during the storm so let's get ourselves in danger there we go this setting here avoid glades except marked goes really well with uh, the uh, method of marking that i had before you know holding down holding down control so this way, as long as you have no borders marked, they'll never chop them, and uh, personally like that a lot. So much appreciation to the people sharing these uh, little tips. So keep them coming, because this game is pretty deep, and I don't think at, at, at any point that I've learned everything already. So, 
Another thing we're going to put on up here is a trading post. The trading post is one of these wonderful buildings where it really doesn't matter at all where it's uh, where it's being put down. So if you ever have any remote position in your city that you feel like I'm certainly not going to use that, slap down your trading post there. You're certainly going to enjoy. Also, roads. There we go. So uh, we got ourselves some lizards. All of us sudden lizard. So lizard isn't so far pretty cool because they make quite good hoth keepers. They have a uh, bonus that gives everybody a plus one of global resolve, but uh, most importantly, the hoth is a warm workplace and the lizards love to be there. So destroyed cage of the war beast. That's a new one that's uh, been updated recently. So uh, we're going to spawn several pieces of living matter when we trigger that event. That's pretty annoying, but that's just as it is. So bigger skewers production. We've got a trapper's camp here, which can forge meat for us. We got an artisan here, which can make coats, pigments, and barrels for us. We've got a smelter here. Well, that's uh, we've been uh, that's rich bounty. But uh, the event is pretty nasty. So, even though, well, nasty-ish. First of all, when you're encountering a new event, always check on out what would happen if it left, if it's left unchecked. So, hostility increased 240, and every newcomer uh, caravan arrives with fewer villagers. That's really brutal. You don't want that. So, we're going to start on out and... Uh, choose a reward here so planks bigger grill and that i'm not really convinced we have the scouts pack already in our um in, in our order reward the planks are nice i don't know if we're going to produce scores yet so i'm going to choose that reward instead so living matter appeared nearby living matter appeared nearby so what's living matter living matter is uh just providing sick rewards at the cost of eating your food that's pretty much the gist of it so uh we're going to retreat and we're going to put our woodcutters away from that they're going to do the job for us and um here we're going to face our first real food scarcity that's okay we're, we're going to survive through that this uh, thing is, the rewards for that event are massive. So we gain faster crop planting, we gain parts, and we gain some oil. And here we gain metal, amber, and parts. So metal is always really cool. Metal means you can build yourself tools for free-ish. So we're going to remove one more woodcutter, so we have a constructor here. Basically, we now just have to hold on through until the uh, these um, events here are resold. This is pretty cool once we have survived it. But one thing is for sure, our colony will have almost no food by the end of this. But uh, that's uh, that's pretty unimportant in so far because we your your dudes they don't immediately starve or anything. They're just getting more and more pissed the longer they have no food. So we're going to work on out with that. So, here we're going to pick up a new caravan of newcomers. Well, I'll pick the dudes with the stone, because our food is going to deteriorate right now anyways. It's uh, not really a smart choice to rack up more food if it's going to get destroyed anyways, no? So, we're going to set them up, up a new home here. And uh, since we have now workers available again, let's pack in the woodcutters ASAP. That's really important. I'm just not going to retreat any of the workers from these events, because if I would do so, somebody else needs to walk on over there, and that's just crappy. The real brilliant news about this, though, is whenever we have a forbidden or dangerous plate event completed, we gain reputation. Each one of these living matter things could count, but this thing will definitely count. So, new cornerstone. What do we get there? So, uh, whenever brawling need is fulfilled, we gain a bonus. These are really hard to fulfill. And without restrictions, oh yeah, let's pick that up. I might have unlocked the uh, consumption controls there, but I love this one. Basically, normally, let's just feature it for a second. 
Normally, we have now the ability to say, you guys don't use that good. You guys don't eat that. This is pretty useful when you want to make sure that certain something doesn't get used up for whatever reasons, for processing, for putting it into a clay event, whatnot. This is really cool, but what's really cool, what, what's also really cool is a 10% chance to just double every production you do. Every production. That's sick. That's one of my favorite cornerstones to pick, because, uh, you know, that goes from everything, from the most low food production up to the uh, refining of tools, and uh, it's brilliant. So, we have our first trader hitting town any moment, and our workers are getting the work done. That's brilliant. So, as you see here, food is uh, running down quite fast, not as fast as uh, we get the events done, for sure. That's pretty brutal. If you have any sea marrow or oil, um, any sea marrow available, you can sacrifice it to increase the blade event work speed. That's a pretty good moment to do so, because this is really one of the most uncomfortable situations to be in, and we're in for a rough ride here, that's for sure. Because we have entered the low food land. So luckily our pal's work is coming around the corner. And he has some food for us. It's, uh, you know, you could now argue with me that it ain't worth buying that food because it's deteriorating right away. But I'd say it's better to get yourself some food now instead of tanking too much of the, uh, of the happiness. Because there's no need risking any, anything bad. We're getting a lot of parts out of the uh, living matter. I remember correctly here five parts i just sold merely a part of the reward to last through the situation a little bit longer the thing is just that once these events are resolved we still won't have any food and that's where the where the problems are at so we have new events unlocked so let's check that out more glades unlocked it's pretty cool uh reward for that though Let's do that. So we're opening up a lot of glades in this run. Got it. Here we can trade some building materials, or here we gain Sahila's cookbook. So the need for jerky is becoming a thing, so we can finally do our drafting. Here we go. So I definitely want the smokehouse. I just have to find out how we're producing uh, meat, but uh, that's going to be a solvable issue. So here I'm totally choosing the kiln. Because the kiln is just awesome. You can refine wood into coal there. And since we're producing tons of wood, this is just uh, even more awesome. And uh, last but not least, here we have the carpenter. Let's check on out. Um, what kind of buildings do I have here? The artisan, well, yeah. Smelter, yeah. Okay, so uh, totally going to uh, go for the carpenter here. Because we have been together brick production and uh, plank production at least more effective than the basics and that's always a good thing so here this run we are a little bit in a wonky situation usually in the beginning of the first year i operate much differently but uh it is as it is so let's wait on out until these uh darned creatures are finally finished with uh eating our food and there we have seven more seconds of Zork left. So we could now consider buying ourselves a little bit more food. I don't think I'll do that. Just a little bit, you know. Or, well, no. Actually, no. That's not worth it. So here we're going to have a really nasty bump there. Because now we are out of food for the moment. And our... Our newest uh, acquisitions, they they don't bring food either, but we can resolve that. First of all, the Trapper's Camp, well, let's see. We could dismantle that for a pack of shrooms, but I'm not down. No, no, we're going to build up a Scavenger's Camp here. Because we're going to be rich on workers anytime again. Very, very soon again, so... Yeah, so the Living Matter clones don't yield any uh, reputation bonuses. Now, that would have been too easy. But uh, this one here was definitely a reward. So we got a half of a reward point there, and uh, 
Okay. So. We can draft something new. Awesome. Either the small farm or the plantation. That's pretty cool. So, all in all, well, we're going to go... Well, I always have a hard time deciding. Here I have a pretty big uh, resource node. Here we have the uh, area already. So, well... Thing is, the small farm doesn't yield as much food directly, but it yields the materials for processed food, so we're, we're going to take that. So... Also, it's about time that we uh, put some people into the workshops, but there were literally no people available for the majority of the time because of the events that we were punching through. So here, when you are out of food, your resolve will drop and drop and drop. Whenever somebody wants to take a break and cannot find any, any food, he's going to be unhappy. So that's one reason why we're not accepting the Amber Trade reward here right now, because I'm just not willing to take the risk of um, of making the situation even worse, you know. Because more people just need, mean more mouths to be fed, and right now that's just uh, something we cannot do. I'm waiting here for the for the collectors uh, to be the scavengers to be finished. Go. So now all the uh, the events have been resolved. Now we can put up scavengers camps here. Well, I'm going a little bit crazy on these scavenger camps for for a moment. Usually, I never run three of these, but you surely understand that this is a uh, kind of a special situation too. So let's bring up a limit on the workstation and employ somebody there as well. You know, we gotta get started. So here we go. But uh, with that amount of workers, we should be getting ourselves through that situation. Here we go. So we don't have any uh, builders now left, but we don't need to. What we right now need most is enough food to keep everybody fed during the next uh, for the next storm season. And then we're finally going to set up our infrastructure. But it was a very successful first year, or it was a very successful two years. Due to the resolve of that event, we have a massive income. We have a lot of doom. Oh, no. Oh, crap. I should have locked the, the oil. Whatever. We got ourselves some oil, we got ourselves a huge stockpile of amber. 30 amber is for this part of the game really a lot. Let's see how we're going to get ourselves through the next storm. Also, we should consider moving our woodcutters camp on over there, because always I always love to work towards the next glade, you know? That's just what I like to do. So let's do this. And... Uh, Woodcutter's camp, avoid glades except marked, and now we're going to unmark everything, hold down control because I love that feature so much, so here we go. That's where they're going to work for the remaining time, but I'm pretty sure we'll have to uh, cut down on the workforce here, because I'm pretty sure, yep, the resolve is dying. Right on, that's not much of a big deal, we're going to uh, remove one woodcutter here. Let's see. And we're already in positive resolve again. But uh, mostly because I took much effort in stabilizing our food situation. Because it was really a little bit problematic there in the first place. So, next few things we require. The carpenter. I really need that now. And I also want to have the the kiln as, fa as, as quick as possible too. Because I really want to get started with the production of building materials in a in a decent way because right now this is just uh it's just not good all right it's just not good all right we have a small farm set up sadly i have no farm fields there yet but maybe 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 we can do that so i'm going to unemploy two woodcutters here mostly because we have such a sick stockpile of wood so it doesn't really matter but with three workers i have 
high hopes that we might actually get those thingies done. So our first scavy camp is uh, no longer finding any resources. I'm going to give them a bit of a uh, action here, but um, not really down for that. Okay, look at that. We're getting the last few farmlands done. But this is also going to be the end of this episode because... You know, we're at the 30 minute mark. And I think this is a brilliant spot to get back, to pick the ball back up next time. So with Prestige 1, as you saw there, it's really worth pressing your your, your luck and, and going forward, earn those reputation points as fast as possible. Because four points more mean that, you're, that the impatience working against you does count way more. Alright, feel free to drop me your comments down below, leave me a thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed, and of course consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. I do content like this almost daily, and if you like that, chances are you like more of it. And I already mentioned it, there's a playlist link in the description box below, starting out from Pioneer difficulty, so you can start out slow. This part here is already a little bit more advanced. Also, feel free to drop me some comments, whatever you want to see featured in the series. I always love recommendations. And last but not least, support me. There are links down there which help you to do so. There's Patreon, PayPal, and Buy Me A Coffee. Like I mentioned before, I just wanted to slap it into the outro as well. And I thank you so, so much for your time and attention. And have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.